Imagine an island where society is organized to promote the common good. What would life be like if we could magically eliminate inequality and guarantee social welfare to all citizens? A society where all needs are met. With the end of scarcity, competition for land and resources would be unnecessary. Add to it complete freedom from ethnic or cultural differences that might create conflict. There would be no need to leave this island as society would flourish. An experiment in the late 60s and early 70s created the perfect environmental conditions for such a society to prosper. The man behind the experiment was Dr. John B. Calhoun, a biologist and pioneer in population dynamics and behavioral research. His groundbreaking experiment at the National Institute of Mental Health gained the public attention and had a lasting influence on urban planning and sociology. In 1968, the same year as Calhoun's most important experiment, another biologist from Stanford University, Paul Ehrlich, published the book The Population Bomb, where he argued that the Earth's resources were insufficient to sustain the projected growth in human population. He called for immediate action to curb population growth through measures such as family planning, birth control, and changes in societal norms. In fact, it seemed a widespread and intense concern about overpopulation gripped the world and many governments akin to a societal fever. Calhoun's experiment hoped to shed light on the consequences of overpopulation. Indeed, much insight was gained and Calhoun is widely recognized for elucidating the potential risks and dangers of high-density overpopulation. Another perspective that was gained from his experiments that is often overlooked is the rare glimpse into what happens to a society when all of its basic needs are met. In order to test his hypothesis, Calhoun experimented with mice colonies. Mice were ideal subjects for this type of experiment because of their genetic similarities, short lifespan, and rapid reproduction, allowing for a compressed timeline to study. Dr. Calhoun's Universe 25 experiment involved creating a mouse utopia with ideal conditions for the mice, such as unlimited food, water, and nesting material, along with the absence of predators and diseases. The enclosure was designed to comfortably hold up to 4,000 mice. The experiment began with four pairs of healthy mice introduced into the enclosure. The mice were of the Norwegian strain, bred specifically for lab experiments. They are known for their health and genetic consistency, reducing variability in the experiment's outcome. Two were male and two were female. Being at reproductive age, they reproduced quickly and the population grew steadily. The environment was ideal and the mice exhibited normal social behaviors. The population continued to grow rapidly, doubling approximately every 55 days. Social structure and hierarchy were maintained and the mice exhibited typical behaviors including grooming, nesting and social interactions. Their behavior matched those found in nature. Almost half the time, mice spent sleeping and about 10% of the time mating, with no need to forage for food or drink or protect themselves from predators. Mice spent more time grooming, nesting and interacting. 315 days into the experiment, the population reached about 600 mice. Signs of stress and overcrowding began to appear. The social structure started to break down and abnormal behaviors became more frequent. With the absence of any predators, aggression between mice increased and the once dominant alpha males began to withdraw from social interactions, leading to a lack of control over territory and mates. By the day 560, distinct behavioral groups started to become identifiable. A group of male mice emerged that began exhibiting hypersexual and aggressive behaviors, often engaging in violence. 
Calhoun named this group the Probers due to their incessant and indiscriminate sexual activity. They eventually represented about 40% of the overall population. These males were observed attempting to mate with any available mouse, regardless of sex, age, or reproductive status. The relentless probing behavior was a stark deviation from normal mating practices. Calhoun determined this group was highly stressed based on enzyme assays measuring adrenaline levels. Another group emerged, which Calhoun referred to as the beautiful ones, because they remained physically pristine and free from scars or injuries. This group, which included both male and female mice, isolated themselves, focusing on grooming and self-care, avoiding typical social and reproductive activities, often displaying homosexual behavior. Another distinct group appeared dubbed the outcasts. These mice, which included females, were marginalized from the social structure, often becoming victims of aggression. Combined, these two last groups comprised roughly half the total population. The few that did reproduce bore young mice exposed to a violent society with far more mice than meaningful roles. As the population continued to grow, reaching its peak at around 2,200 mice, severe social and behavioral issues emerged. Few mice reproduced and no young survived. Many were killed by their mothers or other aggressive males. The living conditions led to what Calhoun termed the behavioral sink. Mice exhibited extreme aggression, social withdrawal, and disrupted mating behaviors. Mothers neglected their young, and some even exhibited cannibalistic tendencies. Homosexual behaviors, infant mortality, and social collapse were rampant. Even when healthy mice were removed and placed into a new fresh enclosure, they were unable to prosper. Despite the availability of resources, the social structures and behaviors necessary for reproduction were so disrupted that the population began to decline. Mice stopped reproducing, and the remaining population aged and eventually died out. By the end of the experiment, the mouse population had collapsed to zero. The stages in the decline were explosive violence, hypersexual activity, followed by asexuality, self-destruction, and finally, extinction. Despite ideal physical conditions, the inability to maintain social structures resulted in reproductive failure and population collapse. Calhoun's experiment highlighted that utopic conditions led to social stress on behavior. Consider the parallels to potential human societal issues in densely populated urban environments. In the 2008 Pixar animated film WALL-E, Humans aboard the spaceship Axiom have become obese, passive, and entirely dependent on technology for their needs, losing their ability to perform basic tasks. Are humans headed to the same fate as the mice in Calhoun's utopia? Calhoun drew parallels with human population growth, and at the time many social scientists called for immediate action in the form of population control. Ironically, this response seems to have catalyzed the social decline with striking similarity to the behavioral sink seen in the experiment. Overall, society today is less violent than it was, say, 200 years ago. Homicide rates are lower than they were historically, and so are large-scale wars. There has, however, been an increase in internal national conflicts, resulting in a growth in displaced refugees and a transformation in forms of violence. The biggest parallel with Calhoun's utopia relates to reproductive behavior. Human sexual behavior has followed remarkably similar patterns. The availability of anti-reproductive technologies has accelerated the destigmatization of abortion out of wedlock births, single parenthood, and many types of sexual behavior. As a result, there has been a collapse of the traditional societal norms and values that regulated reproductive behavior. In the year 2000, 
less than 3% of the population identified as anything besides heterosexual. Today, 20% of Generation Z identifies within the LGBTQ spectrum. A poll conducted by Brown University's student-run newspaper in the spring of 2023 revealed approximately 38% of students at Brown University identify as LGBTQ+. There has been an increase in the abandonment of children in recent years. For example, statistics show that 7,000 children are abandoned annually in the United States. Moreover, child neglect, often related to substance abuse, remains the leading cause for children entering foster care. According to the Guttmacher Institute, an estimated 1 million abortions occurred in 2023, representing a rate of 16 abortions per 1,000 women of reproductive age. This is an 11% increase from 2020 and marks the highest number and rate of abortions in over a decade. The last stage in Calhoun's experiment is population collapse. Indeed, the developed world has seen a decline in population replacement levels since the mid-1960s, threatening our very existence. A society where all needs are met is the siren song of the modern era. Ironically, the very term utopia is derived from the title of the 1516 book Utopia by Sir Thomas More. In this satirical work, Moore describes a fictional island society with highly desirable qualities such as equality, justice, and prosperity for all citizens. The very word utopia combines the Greek words o meaning not and topos meaning place, which together can be interpreted as no place or nowhere, signifying that such an ideal society is an unattainable or imaginary concept. Mm -hmm.